Okay, good afternoon and welcome back everyone to our options education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that I think is by far the most underutilized strategy by options investors, and that is a short put. Um, the, or rather, sorry, not necessarily just from options investors, but from investors as a whole. Many investors think of short puts as this strategy that has a lot of risk, that takes a lot, a lot of margin um, for not a whole lot of reward. But hopefully today I convince you otherwise, that it is a strategy that you should be deploying far more often than perhaps you currently may be, especially for those of you that are short, especially for those of you that are investors in the equity markets. So I call this investing for the future with short puts, because again, this is a strategy for those of you that are investing for the long run using equities or ETFs and how you can enhance that further by selling a put option rather than buying the stock outright using a limit order. So before we get started, what we're going to discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. So we'll start off by just defining what is a short put for those of you that are new to this particular strategy. Specifically, we're going to talk about cash secured puts, not just outright naked puts, even though you can apply this to naked puts here as well. Uh, but we're really talking about cash secured puts here for today. Then we'll go through an example of a short put just so we put it into context exactly the strategy, comparing it to buying a stock. We'll then talk about optimal short puts. How do you actually select the right expiration date and strike price for this specific strategy? And then I want to show you the short put income reports that we have built here at Options Play to help you automate and help find these opportunities in the broader markets and talk a little bit about trade management. The good thing about short puts is that the trade management side of things is extremely simple, extremely straightforward. So there's not a whole lot to go over there. And then we'll try to go through as many live examples as possible before we open this up for Q&A. But before I get started, how many of you have sold a put before? Please bring up your chat window, which is at the bottom of your screen, and please type yes if you have sold a put before, either a cash secured put or a naked put, and please type no if you've never sold a put before. Okay, so at first I saw a lot of yeses, um, holding several now. Uh, I also see quite a few noes. Um, I'm curious for those of you that have uh uh, you know that that you've answered no in terms of selling a cash selling a cash secured put. Was there a reason as to why you did not sell? You have not sold a put. Is it just because you haven't learned about it, or this is new, um, or is there a specific reason that you don't like about short puts that have stopped you from selling them or no longer selling them? Okay, so I see quite a few people who say they they didn't understand. They're still learning. Don't understand the concept. So that's what we're going to go over here today. Hopefully, this will help you better understand. Uh, there is one one comment about risk. Julie says they're con concerned about risk. Uh, Lewis said ca heavy cash back. I think just saying that that requires a lot of cash, and it certainly does. And we'll talk a little bit about how our scans potentially help you identify cash secured puts that are suitable for your your account size. Um, and then everyone else that has said, you know, either you're just getting involved and you're just learning about this. So for those of you that are still learning, uh, today will hopefully help you better understand these strategies. But the primary question that I want to help investors answer during today's session is how can I invest for the future at a discount? Specifically, the keyword here is at a discount using a short put, because we usually don't think about short puts as a strategy that collects us, that gives us a discount, but that's really how you should be thinking about this. So my name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And I wanna share with you again, what I think is the most underutilized option strategy by investors is a cash secured put. And I wanna explain this strategy to you today. So let's start off by just talking about what is a short put, because the strategy itself if you think, if you actually understand it, it's really simple. All you're doing is selling a put option. Whoops. All you're doing is selling a put option. And what you're doing is you're selling a put option on a stock that you wish to purchase. It could be a stock or an ETF, right? But selling a put option on a stock or an ETF that you want to purchase is all you are doing. And by selling a put option on a stock that you want to purchase, what you're going to receive is earning a yield 
on the cash that you need to purchase that stock. Because to buy a stock, you need cash, right? So when you place a limit order to buy a, a stock with, with cash, that limit order just sits there, meaning that a cash is sitting in your, is taken out of your account, taken out of your buying power, but you can't do anything with that cash because it just sits there. When you sell a put option, what you're doing is you're trying to extract some yield from that cash. That's what we call it a cash secured put. Now, when you sell a put option, what happens is you're obligated as the investor to potentially buy the stock or ETF at a specific price. Now, what does that remind you of? It should remind you of a limit order because that's exactly what a limit order does. When you place a limit order to buy a stock at a specific price, it obligates you to purchase that stock potentially in the future at that specific price. And you have to set aside cash out of your buying power in order to place that limit order. So when you sell a put option, your obligations, your requirements, and the amount of cash that you need are almost identical. The difference between a limit order and a cash secured put is that a cash secured put pays you income, pays you yield from the premium that you collect on the short put. Now, there are some limitations to this strategy. It does require you to have enough cash on hand to buy at least 100 shares of the optionable stock or ETF that you're selling the put on because each put option that you sell is for 100 shares. So that is the main limitation for a lot of investors, especially if you have a small account, is how to find cash secured puts that require a smaller amount of cash that suits your account size. But the primary thing to remember is that a limit order and a cash secured put, very, very similar in terms of obligation, very similar in terms of what uh, the amount of cash that you need to place it. The only difference is that one strategy pays you income, the other one, you don't get earn anything. Does that make sense to everyone? Please type one into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. I see a lot of ones. Okay. So, so far, I hope you're still with me, especially for those of you that are new to this strategy. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, this, this cash secured put. Okay. So when you sell a put option, um, and for those of you, if you're new to options or you're still learning, remember that as a buyer of an option, you have to pay the premium. And as a seller of an option, you get collect the premium. So in this particular case, when you sell a put, you're going to collect the premium. Now, what does that premium do? The premium effectively provides you with a discount on the stock purchase because selling a put obligates you to purchase the stock at that strike price at expiration. And what you're doing is you're getting paid a little bit of money for that obligation. So what you're doing is you can effectively take the premium that you're collecting and subtract it from the price that you're obligated to purchase the stock at. And that amount of premium that you collect is the discount factor that you receive on that stock purchase. So when I talk about selling a cash secured put as a way to acquire stocks at a discount, it's the premium that you're receiving that's going to provide you with the discount factor. We're going to talk a little bit about how much of a discount are you going to receive because many investors who have not sold a put before may be surprised at how much premium or how much of a discount you're going to receive on that stock purchase. Now, when you sell a put option, there are two possible outcomes. You can either own the stock at a discount. Uh, think of it like a limit order. When you place a limit order, two things can happen. The stock can either get, you can either trigger the limit order and you own the stock or the order simply expires um, or you cancel the order before the order is filled, right? So when you sell a cash secured put, you have the same two possible outcomes. The stock can uh, decline below the strike price or it stay above the strike price. We're going to talk about those. And the two possible outcomes are the same. You either own the stock, but with a discount or the second alternative, which again, I think is better than placing a limit order, is that if the, the order expires effectively, if the cash secured put that you've sold expires worthless, you keep that income. And you not only do you keep the income, you have the ability to sell another cash secured put and keep that revenue stream, keep that income stream coming in as long as you want to purchase that stock. So you really have, in my opinion, Two, two fairly good outcomes. One, you own the stock that you wanted to own at a discount. Number two, you keep the income and you can do it all over again. And again, I think people will be surprised at how much yield there is. We're going to go through some examples to show you because the average yield that you're going to receive from cash secured put is typically better than the dividend yield that you would receive if you own the stock. 
and it's better than the average market returns that you would receive if you were invested in that stock. So a lot of investors, especially for those of you that have sold a lot of puts, you know, some of the common complaints that I've heard, and, and please, if you've sold the cash secured put, I'm also interested in hearing what complaints do you have or what, what downsides do you see to selling a cash secured put? Please feel free to type that in. I'll try to address that here as well. But some of the, some of the uh, I would say, um, feedback that I get sometimes from cash secured puts is the fact that people say, well, I missed out on the upside of a stock. But you know, the one thing I want to point out, and, and once we look through the numbers, it'll be clear is that the income that you receive, the yield that you receive if the stock doesn't, um, if you don't own the stock, is actually typically higher than what you would get in terms of capital appreciation if you did own the stock in the long run. So for those reasons, um, we're going to go through some of those numbers to help illustrate that and hopefully help you understand. But like I said, when you sell a put option, there are two possible outcomes. You either own the stock at a discount or you keep the income and you can do it all over again. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay. So Let's go through just uh, just a numeric example, just to show you. And this is this is a real put option that I was looking at earlier today. Uh, so let's say I want to buy 100 shares of Alcoa, and Alcoa is currently trading around at this time around forty dollars. So let's say I want to buy the stock around thirty eight dollars, and I have a target price of forty five dollars on this particular stock, right? So the stock's at 40, I wanna buy it at 38, and I think it'll go up to 45. So what I wanted to do is I wanna show you the comparison between a equity trader and an options trader. On the left-hand side, I have an equity trader who would simply place a limit order at $38. If you wanna buy it at 38, this is an order pretty much all of you are familiar with as a stock or ETF investor. You place a limit order to buy the stock, that you want to purchase it at, and you place it specifically at the price that you want to buy it for. So as an options investor, what I would do is I would sell a put option at the exact same price that I would place a limit order at. So if I place a limit order at 38, I sell a $38 put. But again, with a put option, I get paid premium. I collect premium. So what that does is it does two things. One, it reduces my potential reward. Uh, I'm sorry, my potential risk, because if I buy a stock at $38 a share, my risk is $38 a share. If I sold the put option, I sold the $38 put and I collect $2 for it, my risk is $36 a share. And I saw a comment here before. Someone said that they don't like to sell puts because if they get the market direction wrong and the stock keeps going down, they lose money. Well, at the end of the day, you always are going to lose money if you buy a stock and the stock goes down. There's no way around that, right? But the difference is how much do you lose? If you place a limit order, you can lose up to $38 a share if the stock goes down to zero. If you sold a put option, the most you can lose is $36 a share. So that's one reason why I, when I buy a stock, will almost always try to use a cash secured put if possible, because it reduces my risk. If the stock goes down, I risk less than if I placed a limit order. That's key. Reducing risk is always gonna help me in the long run. Number two, if it does, if I do end up owning the stock and it reaches my target price, it not only reduces my risk, it increases my potential reward. Because if I buy it at 38 and, I, and it reaches 45, I make $7 per share. But if I buy it at 36 and it reaches 45, my, my reward is increased to $9 a share. So I have a significant increase in terms of potential reward, a decrease in relative risk, and in this particular case, if I sold, if I place a limit order, I have no exposure in, in, in Alcoa until it declines to $38 a share. Once it does that and my limit order is triggered, now I have exposure. But when I sell a put option, as soon as I sell a put, I start collecting income. And that income is going to be useful even if I never get exposure to Alcoa. And that is the primary difference. Sometimes your limit orders just never hit trigger, right? The stock is currently at $40. And maybe once you sell the put, the stock just rallies up to 45. You kind of miss out on the rally, right? There's just like a limit order. If you place a limit order and it never triggers, you might miss out on a rally. Here, when you sell a put, you still might miss out on the rally, but you have some income to show for it. You have $2 in income. So 
potentially what you're going to do is you're going to be able to purchase Alcoa with a 5.6% discount. 5.6% is $2 out of 38 is a 5.6% discount. So, so scenario, one scenario is that I own the stock at about a 5.5% discount. And the second scenario is that I basically earned 5.6% yield on my cash over this one month that I sold the put. So the two possible outcomes are I own the stock at a discount or I collected 5.6% yield in one month. That's not a yearly in, uh, yield, that's one month's yield. So think about the, what was the last product that allowed you to earn a 5.6% yield just for your cash to sit there and be set aside for an order. Think about your limit orders and how much cash is sitting aside for those limit orders. What is that cash doing for you? Can it be earning you yield? And that's exactly what a cash secure put is. And I think, again, when we go through some examples, people are going to be surprised at how much yield your cash can yield you when you're waiting for your, your equity orders, if you will, to execute. So here's an example. I have a stock that's currently trading just shy of $135. Let's say this is a stock that recently broke out above a recent high. And I think that perhaps it's going to pull back to its support level and rally from here. So here is, I think, a, a good opportunity or a good example of a stock that you might want to sell a cash secured put on because normally you might place a limit order around 130, hope that the stock declines back to its support level, and then continues moving higher. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell a 30-day, $130 put option near the support level. And let's say I collect $5 in premium for this particular trade. Now, just to, just to show you the, the numbers behind this, in order to sell a $130 put option, remember each option is for 100 shares. So when I'm looking at a $130 stock and I multiply that by 100, that means that I have to put up $12,000, I'm sorry, $13,000 in cash in order to sell one contract of this cash secured put. Now, uh, actually this math is wrong, I apologize, but I'm collecting $5 per share on the short put that I've sold. So actually what I need to do is subtract $500 from this amount because I collect $500 in income. So the total amount of cash that I need is $1,200, $500 in order to sell that cash secured put. So. If I place a limit order to buy the stock at $130, I would need exactly $13,000 in cash in order to place that limit order. But if I sold the cash secured put, I only need $12,500. That is the $5 discount that you're actually receiving when you sell a cash secured put. So when we talk about a, a, a cash secured put, you effectively own a $130 stock at only uh, $125. That's your uh, effective 5% discount on your transaction. So again, I apologize that there's a typo here. This should say $12,000. $500 in cash that is required to sell that cash secured put. So once you sell this cash secured put, there are only two possible outcomes. When you sell that 130 put, it either expire, expires above $130 at expiration, so maybe the stock just continues moving higher, or the stock is below $130 at expiration, maybe it pulls back below this support level. Depending on which one of these two scenarios happen, two possible outcomes. So if it expires above $130, what happens is your puts expire worthless, right? When you sell a put option and the, st and the stock stays above your strike price, your puts expire worthless. That means the $5 that you've sold these puts for, you keep 100% of that. So $5 out of $112,500 of, of cash that you need to put aside is 3.8%. And a lot of people think $500 of potential reward for $12,500 worth of risk sounds absolutely crazy. And certainly on paper, right? If someone told you, you the most reward you can make is $500, but on the back of that, you have to risk $12,500 to do it. Um, you know, you would have to be insane to say, great, let's sign me up for that. But you really have to think about this for a second. When do you actually lose $12,500? Uh, the stock would have to go to zero 
by the expiration date in order for that to happen. So the risk of it, first of all, is extremely low and, and, and it doesn't capture fully, in my opinion, the true risk of this particular trade. Because even if the stock declined down to let's say 125, what happens at 125? You actually break even. If the stock declines to zero at 125, you're actually breaking even because $5 minus 130 gives you $125 break even. What happens if the stock goes down to 120? What you're, you're losing $500. If the stock goes down to 115, you lose $1,000. So as you can see, you know that's a, in this particular case, a fairly extreme move here, right? The stock would basically go all the way back down to these previous lows, for you to risk double the amount that you can potentially make. So you really have to think about it in those particular terms, uh, you know, because if you just think about trying to make $500 off of $12,500 worth of risk, no one's going to take that kind of risk. But if you really put it into the context of how far does the stock really need to go for me to lose even a fraction of the $12,500, you're going to see that it requires a fairly substantial move for that to happen. But so when the, when the stock stays above $130, you keep the $5 premium. That's 3.8% over the next 30 days. So in 30 days, you're going to earn 3.8% yield on your cash. Think about your savings account. Even in a high yielding savings account, you're making 80, 90 basis points these days a year. This is looking at 380 basis points in one month. Just to put that into perspective into what type of, um, and, I'm, and obviously a savings account and a cash secure put have vastly different amounts of risk, but think about the risk that you're taking and whether 3.8% yield in a single month may be worth it. Because think about the risk that you take when you buy a stock, right? A stock could easily um, uh, lose 3.8% in a year. I'm sorry, 3.8% in a month. But do you average 3.8% return every single month on your investments? Chances are you don't. 3.8% a month will likely beat most of your performance of your stock or investments or ETF holdings. So keep that in mind. Those are the things that you want to compare. You know, how much how much yield am I actually, how much capital gains, how much yield am I actually receiving from my investment? And how much does this particular strategy pay me? And you're going to find that in many attractive cash secured puts that you're able to sell, you're going to find you're going to get market beating returns just from the yield itself if the stock doesn't move. And you may miss out on some potential opportunities. So maybe this stock quickly rallies to $150 and you effectively miss out on that rally because you could have just placed the market order and bought the stock, right? You may miss out on those rallies. That is, an, that is one of the downsides to this particular strategy, but you can also sell another put. So if like, let's say the stock rallies up to 150, you can now sell maybe a 145 put and maybe collect another uh, three, four percent to potentially own this stock so that if the stock declines, you can further, you can um, uh, participate on further upside here. So that's, that, that's kind of what it looks like if a put option that you've sold expires worthless. On the flip side, if the stock declines below your strike price, now the puts that you've sold are going to be assigned to you. So now you're going to own the stock at $130 minus the two the, the, the $5 that you collected in income. So again, I apologize, this is incorrect. This should say $125, which again translates to a 3.8% discount on your stock purchase. So even though the stock is trading, let's say, let's say the stock is trading at around $129, you now own the stock effectively at $125. So you effectively instantly receive a $4 profit on your trade. So as the stock continues to move higher, you're going to profit more than if you place just a limit order. Does that make sense to everyone? Please type five into the, three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Okay, perfect. So like I said, the strategy, you know, on the on paper doesn't sound great, but when you actually break it down into its components, 
you see that you actually come out ahead in pretty much all scenarios using this particular strategy, especially compared to buying a stock. And a lot of people will say, if you sell a put and the stock goes down, you lose money. Sure. That's the exact same thing that you have if you buy the stock as well. But I will say that if you sold a put, you lose less money than if you bought the stock. So keep that in mind. This is a comparison to buying the stock. You only want to sell a put if you're thinking about buying the stock. Don't sell a put for any other reason only sell a put if you're trying to acquire the stock. So let's talk a little bit let's talk a little bit about optimal put short puts. Last week we talked about optimal cover calls, now we're going to talk about optimal short puts. So uh, Alcoa is currently trading just above $40 here or so. And one thing I want to point out here, this is a stock that pays zero dividends. Always pay attention to the dividend yields. Use the dividend yield as your guide. If you're trading AT&T and IBM and you're trading and you're seeing five, 7% yields, use that as your guide. Because whenever we talk about cover calls and cash secured puts, we don't talk about it in dollar premiums. We talk about it in yield premiums or in yield terms. So it's important that you think about uh, the premium that you're collecting in, in a yield perspective rather than a dollar amount. Dollar amounts don't mean anything because some stocks are $40, some stocks are $400. You don't want to compare dollars. You want to compare percentages and yield. So in this particular case, the stock's at $40. I just have a few different strike prices up. First of all, when we're selling premium, we usually want to sh sell shorter dated options. 30 to 45 days is usually a good starting point when you're selling any type of premium, whether you're selling cash secured puts, cover calls, um, a credit spreads, shorter dated options is where you want to focus because that's where you're going to get a higher amount of, of um, time decay. And I would say that short puts, you can actually skew a little bit towards the shorter end of the spectrum because a cash secured put you plan on holding to expiration. So the shorter dated options are going to have faster time decay per day. So short cash secured puts, one of the few selling strategies where your goal is actually for them to be exercised, that's really where, where you can sell shorter dated options. You know, 30 days out is usually as about as short as I'll go. And then as far as strike prices go, well, strike prices you can choose. So 39, maybe 30. I have 39, 38, and 36, for example, right? So obviously uh, the 39s require a small pullback, 38s require a slightly bigger pullback, 36 requires an even bigger pullback in order for those orders to be triggered. So think of them as limit orders, right? Think about a $39 limit order, a $38 limit order, and a $36 limit order, and just how far the stock needs to move down before those limit orders are triggered. Now, we usually don't think of these in dollar terms. Again, we usually think of them in probability-based terms, and that's why I have delta up here. The delta tells me the approximate probability of this order being triggered. So the 45 delta is something that has about a 45% chance of being triggered. That's, um, that's the closest to the current price of the stock, the 39. The 40 delta is the 38, which is a little further away. So it's a lower probability of being triggered. And the 36 is even further away, a 30 delta. So only about a 30% chance that that order is gonna be triggered. The further away the strike price is, the lower the delta, the lower the probability of that order being triggered. Now, the, or, the strike prices that are closest to the current price are going to collect the biggest premiums. So the $39 strike collects $2, the $38 strike collects $1.50, and the $36 strike collects $1. And I have the break-even prices here, meaning the stock of price that I would effectively own the stock at next to each one. So if I sold a $39 put for $2, I'm going to effectively own the stock at 37. If I sold the 38s for $1.50, I'm effectively going to own the stock at 36 and a half. And if I sold the 36 for a dollar, I'm effectively going to own the stock at 35. So the question for many investors is, which one do I choose? Uh, last week, for those of you that joined me, we talked about selling cover calls and why it's important to sell cover calls that are very far away from the current price uh, and to up and to prioritize capital appreciation of your stock over the amount of income that you receive, meaning you actually want something with lower income, but have higher capital appreciation. So if the stock rockets higher, you're able to participate on that. That means that that is going to contribute more to your bottom line than trying to collect an extra $1 or 50 cents by selling a cover call that's closer to the current price of the stock. But when you're selling a cash secured put, 
It's actually the exact opposite. Because when you sell a cash secured put, remember your primary goal is to own the stock so that you can participate on the upside. That's where most of the gains you're actually going to make is going to be is if you own the stock and you're right on your analysis and the stock rallies significantly higher. So when you're selling a cash secured put, there are two things that you want to prioritize. First, owning the stock, having a high probability of owning the stock. So generally speaking, higher deltas. Higher deltas is what you want to choose. Number two, you also want to pick up as much yield as possible because the higher the amount of yield, the more, um, the, the bigger the discount that you receive on that stock purchase. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type four into the chat window if that makes sense to you as to why when you're selling a cash secured put, you actually want something with a higher delta, with a more premium that gives you a bigger discount factor. The question is just how big of a discount factor do you want? I tend to find that the 40 delta is the one that suits me the best. Um, the reason for it is because I usually want to pick a strike price that's close, but not too close. Um, you know, I still want to collect a fair amount of yield, but I don't want to have that, you know, 45, 50% chance of owning. I think 40 delta is a good starting point here for me. And look at how much yield I'm receiving, 3.8% on the $38 put that collects $1.50. Remember, this is 3.8% over just 30 days. This is a stock that pays zero dividends. So now I'm earning 3.8% in just 30 days. And what does that annualize out to? A 48% yield, which means that if I'm able to do this strategy over and over again throughout the year, now obviously I'm not going to be able to do it um, on Alcoa for 12 months throughout the year. Chances are at some point, especially with the 40 Delta, I'm going to end up owning this stock. But if you use this annualized return field, to think about all of the cash secured puts you sell. Maybe this cash secured put is 48%, the next one's 30%, the one after that is 35%, the one after that is 40%. You start to get a sense that as you do this throughout the year, all that cash that you're putting aside to own, to potentially buy the stocks and ETFs that you're, that you're, um, that you're trying to purchase, you're going to average about 30, 40% yield on that cash. You know, that's a fair amount of yield. So even if you never participate on the upside of these stocks, which is not going to happen, especially with the 40 Delta put, but on the 60% 60, 60 times that you sell the cash secured put, the stock doesn't get put to you, you're earning 30, 40% yield on your cash. That's likely higher um, a better returns than you would if you actually did own those stocks because most stocks don't move on average 30, 40% per year, year after year, because this is, this is fairly steady income that you're going to receive. 60% of the cash secured puts you sell, you sell will expire worthless when you use a 40 Delta, that's exactly what that tells you. And the yields are surprising to a lot of investors. And a lot of people think of, you know, cover calls as something that generates one, 2%. But when you think about cash secured puts, they generate significantly higher yield on the cash that you put aside. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type five into the chat window. And I'm curious, are people surprised at the yields that you're, see that you're seeing here in some of these examples? Please type yes into the chat window if you're surprised as to how high these yields are when you're selling a cash secured put. And I see a lot of yeses. Okay, and we're gonna, and this is this is a real example. This is not a fictitious example that I'm giving you. Um, some people are saying no. Maybe for those of you that have been doing this for a while, you're not surprised by that. But you know, when you look at uh, Options Play's short put income report, this is where we rank all S and P 500 stocks. We also pull in the very liquid ETFs for those of you that sell cash secured puts on ETFs that you want to own. What we do is we sort it for you based on the highest annualized return, so that you can find stocks that give you the largest discount for stock purchases. But not only can you use this report to help you find uh, short puts that generate a fair amount of yield, and as you can see, the annualized returns for many of these stocks range in significantly higher than the, than the ones that I just showed you here with Alcoa. But the second thing is that for those of you that, that said in the beginning that cash secured puts take too much 
a, a cash or you don't have enough cash, well, you can use the, the stock price to help you filter based on stocks that are lower price because you know CCL at $17 only requires $1,700 minus the $1.60. So you only need about $1,600 to sell one cash secured put on Crown Royal. So you can use this report to help you find opportunities that are a lower price for those of you that have smaller amounts of cash and at the same time, higher yields. So how to access this report, you can click on the education and resources section at the top of your options play screen, which you'll find at the link at the top of your options play platform. When you click on that, it'll bring you to the options play hub. And within the options play hub, there is a report called the cover call and a cash secured put report. And when you look at this, this is, we went over this last week. So for those of you that are new, um, you know, and you're watching the recording from last week, you have access to both a cover call uh, report on this page, as well as a short put report on this page. So like I said, as you can see, the annualized return numbers are here on the right hand side. As you can see, there are plenty of stocks that are yielding way higher than the numbers that I was showing you here before. Um, but you can use also this to look for stocks with a relatively low stock price. The lower the stock price, the less capital is required to, to sell a cash secured put. So something like AG requires less than $1,500 to sell that. Um, uh, Crown, Crown um, um, CCL, uh, Carnival is, is CCL Crown or Carnival Cruise, uh, about $2,400 to sell that. Alcoa, $3,700. You can find stocks that are relatively low priced. Uh, Roku is going to cost you $30,000. So maybe that's outside of your range. And this is something that you can use for this, this report to help you find opportunities. And what I typically do here with this, with this report is I usually go down the list and I find stocks that I wouldn't mind owning. Um, and, and everyone is going to have a different criteria as to what constitutes as a stock that you don't mind owning. Um, you know, I tend to have a, a pretty good sense for the stocks that I'm interested in already, you know, stocks that I've done research on from a technical and fundamental perspective. Many of you have joined me on my rapid fire session where I kind of point out some of the stocks that I really like from a technical and fundamental perspective, or you've joined us on our thematic series every single month where we talked about specifically long-term investments. So, you know, through all of these things, I kind of have a list of stocks that I like, stocks that, I, that I've been watching for a while. And I tend to go down this, this type of list and I find the ones that have the highest yield and it's sorted based on annualized return for you. So for example, I was recently interested in Pinterest potentially as a stock. Uh, Alcoa is also another stock that I'm interested in. And you have all the information that you need. You have the expiration date, you have the strike price, you have liquidity, you also have IV rank. For those of you that follow that metric, you also have the next earnings date. So you can know, is there a short put? Uh, if I sell a short put, is there earnings between now and expiration? You don't. Sometimes you don't want to sell a short put going into earnings. And then you have yield information here on the right-hand side. So you have all the information that you really need to quickly make a decision. You know, L Brands recently spun off Victoria's Secret. Maybe that's something that you're interested in. Uh, ARC, uh, you know, for those of you that follow me, I'm going to be on CNBC after the show here. I, I'm going to be highlighting a trade here in ARC similar to a short put. Um, so you can go down this list and find the stocks that you're interested in. Maybe you're not interested in a lot of these stocks. Maybe you have to get down to FCX. Maybe you really like Freeport McMorrin uh, trading at $40.50. Uh, this is generating a 64% yield on FCX. Let's take a look at FCX. Um, FCX currently trading at $42, uh, recently breaking out above some resistance levels. Maybe you want to take a look at this. So you can click on the income tab here on options play. And when you use the income tab, the way that we show you the option strategy is focused on that yield. Like I said, and the others, when you're trading, you're focused generally on dollar amounts and things like that. But when you're selling cash secured puts, you want to focus on yield, right? So this, the income tab helps you calculate all these yield numbers that we're talking about. So FCX doesn't pay a lot of much, a high dividend, only uh, eight, uh, 18 basis points. But if I sold in this particular case, let's say a June uh, 25th, 
uh, let's look at my report here. FCX was the June 40 and a half puts, uh, June 25th, uh, 40 and a half puts. Uh, 40 and a half, that's about a, four, a 40 delta. And as you can see here, uh, collecting $2.23. So this is a 5.3% discount on the stock purchase if FCX, Freeport McMoran, is below $40.50 by uh, the July 20, uh, June 25th expiration. And just to do a little math here, if I needed to, if I per purchase, put a limit order to buy 100 shares of this stock, I would need $4,050 in order to do so. But when I sell a cash secured put, I only need $3,827 to sell this cash secured put instead of placing a limit order. That is the $223 discount that I'm receiving from selling the cash from selling the cash secured put, which translates to a 5.3% discount or a 45% yield on my cash. So worst case scenario, I miss out on this move and the stock just continues to move higher here and I lose out on the potential outcome. I'm still, I have 45% yield to, to show for it, uh, to, to, to offset the, the opportunity cost, if you will, of missing out on the upside. And you know, some investors are always concerned about downside risk here as well. And the downside risk is certainly there, but you really have to think about this, right? If this stock declined down to $36, we can do a little bit of math here. Uh, your break-even price here, first of all, is $38.27. So if the stock declined to $36, which is certainly what I would consider a sizable move here to the downside, or maybe even $33, you know, looking at this, uh, the break-even price here, I'm looking at maybe a $227 loss if the stock declined to $36. So my, my, potential, out, my potential reward is $223. My potential risk is $227 if this stock declined client the $36. So the risk to reward ratio is not as skewed as some as perhaps the numbers may scare you because the numbers may on paper look quite scary. Max risk, I'm sorry, max reward of $223, max risk of $3,827. You look at those numbers and you would think I would be crazy to tell you about to selling this type of strategy. But the reality is that even a sizable drop down to $36 would only result here in this particular case, $227 worth of risk rather than $3,800 worth of risk because FCX has to effectively go bankrupt and trade at $0 in order for that to happen. Happen, okay, so that's really some of the numbers to pay attention to. And we can just go through one more example here. And you can either use this report to find opportunities, or you can simply type in a stock that you want to purchase. I'm sorry, a stock that you're interested in purchasing. You can even set your own income settings, um, short, medium, or long-term, conservative, optimal, or aggressive. Um, you can set them independently of each other and save each, each one as default. And for any stock that you type in, um, what was another one we're looking at? Oh, let's, let's say you're interested in Carnival Cruise right now. Maybe you think that the travel industry is selling off and these are opportunities to buy and you want to buy at a discount. So let's take a look at this. Carnival Cruise pays 0% dividend, selling a July 22 and a half put, which is about two and a half dollars below the current price, will give you a 4.7% discount or a 27% yield on your cash to attempt to purchase this particular stock. And as you can see, um, you know, that yield is substantially uh, substantially um, uh, higher, right? And same thing, even on a high yielding stock like AT&T, those are the ones that you're going to less likely find attractive cash secured puts here. So AT&T, as you can see, pays 6.5% dividend yield. Selling this cash secured put only collects 2% yield, which is still an 11% annualized yield. So even in what I would consider a, a very unattractive cash secured put, I'm still looking at yields that are double what the dividend yield is paying. So for a stock like AT&T that doesn't have a ton of capital appreciation where most of your income is going to come from the dividend, a cash secured put even in this example doubles the yield that you receive from what is uh, what is arguably a very attractive um a dividend yield here for a stock like AT&T. So you can use the report it helps you find opportunities very quickly. I tend to use the report a lot many times when I'm looking for stocks like Ford. Oh, whoops. 
like for example, Ford is a stock that that you know if you're inter interested in electric vehicles, maybe one that you might want to you, you might want to purchase um, at a at a discount here. Um, you're going to collect fair amount of yield here, a five percent yield or a fifty five percent annualized. There's no earnings coming up, which is great. Uh, IV rank is twenty two percent, relatively uh, elevated, somewhat liquid stock, and you know collecting sixty two cents on eleven fifty stock, which is a 5.3% yield. And for those of you that saying, you know, that say that I don't have a lot of cash to do this, Ford uh, at $11.50, you need uh, about $1,000 in cash to do this. You don't need a lot of cash to sell, uh, you know, this cash secured put here on Ford. So, you know, as you can see, there are a lot of opportunities, even for those of you that have smaller accounts and you're trying to um, you're trying to find opportunities uh, in this in this market using a, a strategy that you may have thought was out of reach, and then um, using a report like this helping you find that, and then finding you the best yielding opportunities as well. Um, not just finding stocks that are low price, but low price stocks that have a fair amount of yield. So with that, that covers what I wanted to share with you here today. I hope that this was helpful in giving you a better understanding of cash secured puts and how they may fit into your portfolio. And more importantly, how you can find them using the options play tool. If you're, if you've, if you've not signed up for options play yet, you can access all of these tools free of charge at optionsplay.com for 30 days. Uh, it's a free 30 day trial that you can sign up for at optionsplay.com. And if you're currently on a trial, again, I just want to thank our members for supporting us and allowing us to continue to do this every single week in providing you these types of research reports and doing these educational sessions to help you better understand how to use them and maximize them, your, maximize potential rewards, minimize your risk, and maximize your income on all of these strategies. So with that, thank you so much for your time. At this point, what I'll do is I'll open this up for Q&A. And for those of you that asked a couple of questions regarding CNBC, I'm going to be on Fast Money here later today at around 5.45-ish. Again, we're going to be highlighting a trade on ARC. Um, interesting way to leverage a, ca a cash secured put actually on ARC. Um, so for those of you that are interested, I'll be on in about 45 minutes here on Fast Money doing the options action piece. Uh, so uh, there is a Q&A section and a chat window here at the bottom. So please, if you have a question, please type it into the Q&A section and I'll try to answer as many questions I have time for here in that Q&A section. Um, I understand the cash secured put, but the downside is the stock price could plummet well below your strike price. Do you ever make a spread out of it? If so, what point? Um, Mark, you know, yes, you're right, right? But here's the thing is that there's always risk to the downside whenever you buy a stock. That's the risk you take when you're buying a stock. So this risk is exactly the same thing as buying a stock. The only doubt, the only benefit is that you have that cushion that you receive, four or five percent discount that you receive. That's going to be the cushion that cushions you from that drop. Can you turn it into a a spread, you certainly can, Mark. However, I will say that if the stock plummets, then probably your views on the stock was wrong. It's probably best to just simply buy the stock. I'm sorry, sell the stock, get out of it, and move on to the next trade. Um, you know, you can spread it, but I don't necessarily know that that's worth doing. Stock price sometimes drops way below the strike price, resulting in a significant loss. My fault for not staying on top of the stock price. So Kenneth, that, again, that's a risk that you take with buying a stock, right? Is that the stock plummets. That's, that's the risk that you take for the potential upside. This doesn't stop you from taking on that risk. What it does is it lowers the risk. Can you talk about selling a cover call then protecting your downside by buying a put? Um, Michael, we did talk about that last week where we talked about selling a cover call. As far as protecting your downside by buying a put, Michael, I do have a separate webinar on uh, hedging a portfolio where we talk about both of those strategies, selling cover calls and buying a, a put. Um, so I highly recommend that you watch uh, or follow us on YouTube. I will post a link into the chat window right now for our YouTube channel. For those of you that are new, I suggest that you follow Follow us on YouTube because all of our recordings, education sessions, Tuesday morning sessions uh, are all available to you on YouTube. So follow us on YouTube and you'll and make sure that you subscribe and click on the notification bell because that's going to allow you to see um, every time that we upload a new, um, a new video.
Um, for those of you that are saying that, you know, a cash secured put loses money when the stock goes down. Um, well, that's true for any strategy where you get the directional view wrong, right? If you think the stock's going to go up and it goes down, you're going to lose money. If you think it's going to go down, but it goes up, you're going to lose money. This is not, there's no strategy, if you will, that, that prevents that, right? If you get the directional view, you're, you're going to lose money. That's, there's no ifs or buts about that. So it's, this is not some magic strategy that just automatically makes you money that doesn't exist. So only sell this if you're comfortable with owning the stock. Only sell this if you're comfortable taking on the risk of that stock moving lower. Um, I, you're right. The, for everyone that said that I lose money when the stock goes down, you're absolutely right. But there's no way around that. You either, you, if you don't want to take the risk, then don't trade, right? That's the only way to truly not have any downside. But if you're going to trade, there's going to be downside. Um, this is just less downside than if you just bought the stock. Uh, what is the mini index symbol for Dow? And would you agree that if I just concentrate in selling premiums of the four major mini index and do not do individual stocks, I know it's a preference, but what is your take on this? So Felipe, I talked about this, you know, uh, quite a bit in my intro to in in index options um, session a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to be doing another index option um, event uh, either the following week or the week after um, in either late May, early June. So I'm a big advocate for index options. The only problem with index options is that they've been historically very large in size. So the new XND micro, X, uh, micro NASDAQ 100 index, I think is a very suitable product product for retail investors to sell premium on indices, which have less volatility, less gaps, and you have some uh, some very interesting benefits. The cash cash settlement, 60-40 tax rule, um, that provides you with the tax benefit. So Felipe, I, I'm a big advocate of mini index options. Um, wouldn't it be better to sell a vertical to say 3850 to reduce the risk and maybe get a little less premium? Well, Bill, you're going to get a lot less premium using the cash secured put versus the um, the spread. So, for example, just to show you, um, you're you're right. You do have less risk. You also have less potential reward. So, if we talk about a short put here, um, if you sold the 3835. You get a dollar if you sell the 38s. Oops. So just to put those two in comparison, right? Here you get a dollar oh seven. Here you get three dollars and fifteen. So yes, you take on less risk, but you also collect sixty six percent less premium. So one is not better than the other, right? It's just different. One risks less money. And if your goal is to risk the least amount of money possible, then sure, the cash, the credit spread is better for you. The cash secured put is a more optimal strategy because for what is arguably similar risk, and what I mean by similar risk is that this number masks the true risk, right? Because this is assuming that the stock can go to zero by expiration. Chances are that's not going to happen. Um, you know, even at a two standard deviation loss here. As you can see here, you're only looking at $1,200 worth of loss. So that's that's a fraction of a $3,400 $3, loss. But even a one standard deviation move here, as you can see, is only a $400 loss. But you have an extra $200 in, in income to offset that. So that's really where you have to think about this in terms of where's the what's the risk to reward ratio that that suits you, right? Are you willing to take on $400 worth of loss to try to make $300 or are you willing to take on $193 loss to make $107? Those two, you know, in, in my opinion, I would rather take that, right? Because I'm actually risking less for the amount of premium that I can potentially make. Here, I'm actually risking more for every dollar that I could potentially make. So a credit spread, yes, less risk, but you're actually risking more per dollar of potential income that you might make. Um, can you please suggest a strategy that is directionally neutral? I tried out of the money iron condors and the stock went through the spreads and I still end up with a loss. Well, 
I mean, the problem here is not the iron condor. The problem here is that you got the directional view wrong, right? Because you're saying that it went through the spreads and went through the stock prices. So you ended up getting the directional view wrong. So this, there's nothing wrong with the strategy. You got the directional view wrong, Wing. Um, so next time, if you got the directional view right, that, that iron condor would be profitable. Uh, when do you sell a put? When the stock price bounces off of moving average support, at which premium collected will be much more than selling a put on stock that's five dollars above a support level? Kevin, um, you know, I tend to find that I'm not too too keen on 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 um, timing a, a credit spread because I'm sorry with a short put because I'm using deltas to select my strike prices anyway. I always have a forty percent probability of owning that stock. Timing is not something that you really have to worry that much about um, when you're selling a cash secured put as it's not as sensitive as when you're buying a stock. So. You don't have to be too time sensitive, in my opinion, when you're selling a cash secured put. When things are more volatile, the 40 delta naturally adjusts for that. When things are less volatile, then 40 delta will naturally be closer to the current price. Hi, Tony. By writing a $13 put on stock XYZ, does that mean I could be assigned the stock goes to 13 on expiration? The answer to that question is yes. My broker says it will auto exercise the stock at $0.01 in the money, even if my breaking point is $12.50. That is correct. As soon as the put option is in the money by even one penny, you will automatically be exercised at expiration. Your break even price is your break even price. But if the stock is below the strike price, you will be exercised at, at expiration. Um, I always use Delta to select my strike prices, never use a dollar amount. What is the difference between a cash, cash covered put and a naked put? The naked put is just done on margin, so you don't need as much cash. So here I need $3,485 to sell this cash secured put. If I don't have $3,485 in buying power, I'm not able to sell this put. On a naked put, I'm only going to need about maybe a little under $1,000 in premium. Uh, I'm sorry, $1,000 in buying power in order to trade that. But that means I'm trading on margin and I could be liquidated if the stock moves substantially even if it doesn't get to zero. When I sell a cash secure put, no matter what, I can't get liquidated because the stock can't go below zero. You can sell a put to also collect premiums, not just if you want to purchase the stock at a discount. That is true, Felipe. However, I don't think that the that the upside of the just the premium is enough if you're not willing to take on the risk of owning that stock. So that's why I don't recommend selling cash secured puts if you don't want to own the stock. For time decay, does it also take into account Saturdays and Sundays? Yes, theta is per day. So you can always you know, think about the weekends as data, theta, times th uh, theta times three. Uh, what is desired cover call delta? The cover call delta optimal is about 15 delta. So fairly far out of the money calls. I suspect like cover calls, you don't sell over earnings. I generally will not sell a cash secured put over earnings. Do not do we need to worry about earnings when doing a cash secured put? So that was the previous question and the answer is yes. On the mini index question, trading weekly seven days out four, per, uh, four times per month available. So Felipe, we've back tested this. You know, the, the seven day mini, the seven day credit spread underperforms the 45 day credit spread over and over again. Not to mention you have uh, seven times more, some seven times greater transaction costs. A lot of people don't think about transaction costs, but it really eats away into your profits. You know, whenever, whenever you have one strategy versus another strategy that on paper theoretically has a small edge, but then you have to trade seven times the transactions to trade a 45 day credit spread versus weekly credit spreads. When you add that many transactions, the transaction cost will eat away any potential edge that you have on trying to eke out an extra couple of pennies on theta. So Felipe, do not sell seven day options because just the increase in transactional costs will eat away all of the potential profits that you could get from selling short dated options. Not to mention the, the gamma risk that you take on shorted dated options already offset the potential gains that you have in, the, in theoretical gains that you have from an acceleration in theta. We have years and years of back testing to prove that. Um, so. We tried to show you some of that during last week um, during our intro to index options. I'll do more of that back testing and show you some of those results, but do not sell seven day options. 
you might look good on paper, but in the long run, once you factor in transaction costs, once you factor into the gamma risk, you do not come out ahead. What stock value used to com compute the raw yield? The raw yield is the strike price minus is the premium divided by the strike price. Because the strike price is what you effectively are going to own the stock at. Um, do you have any, do you have some favorites for generating income? I don't know what you mean by favorites for generating income. Favorite what? If selling a 30 delta is not likely to be a sign and brings in about 30% annualized, would you, would you selling puts be good long-term strategy? How about lower delta to reduce risk of owning the stock? So here's the thing, right? Lower delta means lower risk of owning the stock, but it also means less income to offset down moves, right? Because that's the risk that you're taking is that that down move. So the larger income that you receive, the more, the higher the buffer that you have against that down move. So the lower you go, the worse your risk reward actually becomes. So that's why when you sell a cash secured put, you want to sell a higher delta. 40 delta is generally where you want to be. I sold the Tesla put expire next Friday, strike at 655, losing money now. Should I roll out of the option to June or take the stocks in and sell the cover call? So Gary, you sold the put, you sold the put at 655. That means you wanted to own the stock at 655. If you now no longer want to own the stock at 655 because of new information that you have, then buy back that put and simply get out. It, otherwise, just let the put expire worthless. And now you own the stock at the price that you wanted to own it at. Could you add valuation metric to screen? Sure, absolutely, William. Um, you know, I encourage investors to look at fundamentals before you invest in a specific stock or sell a put on a stock. Uh, currently, the reports can't be sorted, but we do send you this list in the in an email in your daily play at the bottom of your list that can be sorted. But we are working on having these reports that are fully downloadable and fully sortable for you. Um, so I know that was one of the highly requested features. So we are currently working on that. Uh, it does none of these reports take into anything technical or fundamental. This is purely based on every single stock that's available. So regardless of what your views are on the stock, we have every stock on here. That's the whole point. And this is a comprehensive list. We're not going to do any filtering on your behalf because you each, everyone has their own views to technicals and fundamentals. We wanted to provide a comprehensive list for you. So regardless of what stock you want to sell a cash secured put on, you should be able to find it on this list. Are you opposed to using this solely for income generation only? Selling puts versus cover calls for income generation seems to use less capital. Selling puts versus cover calls for income generation seems to use less capital. Yes, it does use less capital. Um, but once you own the stock, you should sell cover calls on that stock. But as you're trying to acquire the stock, you should use a cash secured put. Is it safe to assume if a stock like Ford on the short put report, it will show up on the creditor's credit spread report or not. No, it is not safe to assume that at all because credit spreads is not just looking at high implied volatility. It's looking at the skew between the 50 delta and the 25 delta, trying to find the biggest amount of skew where you have a very high elevated implied volatility at the money and relatively lower implied volatility out of the money. So you, that you're collecting as much as possible on that 50 delta and paying as little as possible on that 25 delta. That's a completely different thing that you're scanning for on the credit spread than you are here on a short put. Why not sell 30-day options which decay faster? Well, William, I was saying 30 days is usually where 30 to 45 days is where we start, and I tend to lean towards 30 days for cash secured puts. Um, I'm on CNBC around 545, 550 this, this evening. Uh, would it be okay to sell slightly in the money or deep in the money? Is that bad? It is very bad to sell in the money options because in the monies have no extrinsic value. The whole point of selling premium is to extract extrinsic extrinsic value. If you're not extracting extrinsic value, then you're not getting paid for the risk that you're taking. So do never, ever, ever sell an in the money or deep in the money option. 
how about buying a put to limit capital required? So Dean, I was showing you before you can do it, but the uh, but the risk to reward that you have on a on a put credit spread is substantially worse than the risk that you actually have with a short put. A lot of investors think that I'm taking on less risk here. You're taking on a less risk from a dollar perspective, but you're actually taking on more risk for the potential reward that you have many times. Do you only advocate selling puts on stocks that you genuinely want to buy, or do you have different parameters for selling puts per, per, primarily for income? So Lou, we've back tested this as well. Um, you know, I don't think you should sell puts on stocks for income. If you want to sell puts on indices for income, you can. Uh, but so do it on index options like XND is a good example of one at $130. You know, it's only requiring $13,000 in premium uh, to do so, or if you're doing it on a margin, you know, a fraction of that. But do not sell puts on stocks if you do not want to own it. If you're just trying to collect income, I would, I would advocate doing it on um, indices or doing credit spreads on indices. Uh, regarding entry timing, do you look for oversold conditions or other criteria or enter any time regarding um so I tend so certainly oversold conditions are are from a timing perspective good, but oversold conditions also means that you lower your probability of actually owning the stock. Um, so I don't time credit uh, cash secured puts as heavily as I do with other strategies that are more directional. Cash secure puts are really not a directional strategy. You're just trying to collect yield and you want about a 40% chance of owning that stock. You really have to be just comfortable with the idea that 60% of the time you're not going to own that stock and just be okay that you can collect 30, 40% yield and be happy with that. Um, and, and, and know that more times than not, you will actually miss out potentially on owning that stock. Explain IV rank. IV rank is really just taking a look at the highest point IV has been and the lowest point IV has been over the past year and where we currently sit. So if it's right smack in the middle, it's at 50%. If it's in the 25 percentile, it's at 25%. It just lets you know whether the current implied volatility you're currently looking at, uh, where it is within the range of the lowest it's ever been and the highest it's ever been over the past year. It's just a very easy zero to 100 um, indicator to give you a sense for whether implied volatility is high or low. How to calculate risk on a short put of ETF versus a single stock? It is identical. Um, short puts and ETF, I mean, ETFs are effectively the same thing as a single stock. So risk is exactly the same in terms of calculations. Cash secured puts on stocks have issued due to sector rotation instead of how, how about SPY, DII, or IWM? So, you know, indices have, as you say, you know, what you're basically saying is that you have um, uh, diversified away, you know, some of the risk with indices, and you're absolutely right, but that also means that you have less income, right? So if you try to sell a cash secure put on SPY, it really doesn't provide much income. Uh, I'll show you here in one second. So as you can see before, we were showing you 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% annualized returns, SPY 11%. So less risk, also less income. Uh, will you be sharing your slides? Tom, all of, our, all of our webinars, we always share with you our slides. And just to show you guys on every YouTube video, when you follow us on YouTube, um, on any video that we, we have on, on, um, on Options Play, when you click on the, uh, when you click on, whoops, Any YouTube video that we send you uh, in terms of a webinar recording, you're going to be able to see the, the slides in the description. So we always have this um, in the description where it says download slides. So any video that you see us do on options on our YouTube channel, in the description, you'll always see a link to download, um, download uh, slides. So you can do that um, on our platform, on, on the YouTube platform. Uh, how do we register for your upcoming ARC session? You don't have to register. You just have to watch CNBC. I'll be on around 5, 5, 5.45, 5.50 here today. So in about 30 minutes or so. So as long as you're watching CNBC, you'll be able to see it. 
Do you stick to your 21 days to expiration to close your cash secured puts? No, because cash secured puts, you want to own the stock. So you don't want to close it out 21 days for expiration. We close a credit spread 21 days before expiration because we don't want to own that stock. That's not the goal of a credit spread. So no, the 21 day rule does not apply here. Is there a way to search or resort the cover call report? So currently there is not, but we are aware of that issue and we are working on making a list that's not only sortable, filterable, but also downloadable. Um, can you use other technical indicators to improve directional view? Uh, I, I certainly use technical analysis heavily in my directional view, but you should also use the technical score and the one month and six month trend, right? So if we're looking at, um, Let's look at Ford. As you can see, a technical score of eight, that tells me it's outperforming the broader markets. The one month and six month trends may be turning a little lower here. So we'll, as you can see, the trends are turning a little bit bearish here. So perhaps not the best time from a timing perspective. Um, maybe Facebook, uh, Facebook, perhaps a better, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, well, Facebook is not outperforming the broader market. So you really have to find a combination. Uh, here's. Here's a stock. I mean, here's not a stock that I particularly love, but um, a score of eight uh, outperforming the broader markets. One month and six month trend is bullish. This is leveraging technical analysis, a combination of moving average momentum indicators to extract this type of information. So yes, I use op uh, technical analysis very heavily in my work to uh, gain my directional view. So with that, that covers what I have time for here today. I really hope that this was helpful in giving you a better understanding of cash secured puts and hopefully convince some of you that are on the fence or learning about it, the benefits of it and how you can utilize options play and the different reports that we have to help you find the best opportunities to extract as much income as possible from this type of strategy. And for those of you that are currently selling cash secured puts, hopefully this makes your life a little easier in helping you understand, analyze and finding opportunities. So with that, thank you so much. I will send this recording out to you guys as soon as we finish um, processing this later today with the slides so that you can follow along at your own pace. Remember, we don't have a session tomorrow morning. So the next time I'll see you guys is on Tuesday morning for our Tuesday morning market outlook session. With that, thank you so much. Have a great trading day and I'll see you guys here on Tuesday. Also, I'll see the rest of you on CNBC in about 20, 25 minutes. Have a good night.